No network, no money, no idea, no education, no problem. You've read the Astonishing Secrets thread, feel inspired and empowered. Yet you have done nothing about it. In an effort to reduce this phenomenon, I'm no longer going to be writing short stories that make you feel enlightened. Instead, you will only be getting action steps to get the ice cream. If you are reading this and you have not shifted your mindset then go back to the other thread. If there's any big takeaway for that thread, it is this. The first two years for a newbie entrepreneur are really just made to condition your mind a set. Everyone thinks that they'll be a millionaire within 12 months, but that just isn't the way it works. Unless you're Jack. Consider the first two years to be training for the Olympics. Don't expect to win any gold medals until after the first two years of suck. I am going to be eliminating all excuses that you have for not making money in this life. Below is an overall view of the plan. Every so often I will post a detailed explanation of how to accomplish each task, I don't know how often I'll update it. I'm only doing this for fun to distress myself and when I need a few moments to take my mind off the guppy tank. This outline is subject to change and is comprised mainly of Jack Edwards style offline angles and zen online creativity. A hybrid mix to make a unique flavor of ice cream. Before you do any of this, please learn copy. Don't ask me if it works. Just trust. 1. Find the top 100 performers in XYZ niche and contact them through various methods for an interview. 2. Create a website and post one new interview per week discussing their best sales and marketing strategies. 3. Use free marketing strategies to drive traffic to your website. You are not selling anything at this point, only creating credibility and gaining trust. 4. After a good number of interviews, write up a PDF article titled, The Astonishing Secrets That The Top Performers In XYZ Niche Don't Want You To Know. List out some good info in this article. Generate an email list by offering this article to potential leads on your website. Enter your email here and receive a free report. The list of email leads is key for later on. The leads are the gold. 5. You'll start noticing common pains that many of these top performers are experiencing. Take note of these pains for later. 6. Organize a Skype group for 10 to 20 of these performers who want the same needs solved and organize weekly calls with the group. During each call, have them describe in explicit detail what they want the solution to look like. They will build rapport and trust with you over the coming weeks as you express that you genuinely care about solving their problem. 7. Once they have told you in very detailed descriptions of what their solution should look like, get $2K, $3K in pre-sales from each of them. They trust you at this point so it should feel comfortable. 8. Build the solution and launch it to your Skype group for testing. 9. After they have tested it out over the next few weeks and used it to their liking, get testimonials from them. 10. Now that your product has been tested and proven to work without bugs, promote it and email some really good sales copy to the long list of email leads that you've generated. They now trust you and see that you have credibility because you have been giving them some very valuable content discussing the best sales and marketing tactics of the top 100 performers in XYZ niche. 11. When you have some money in the bank, Start using paid advertising to drive more leads. 12. Start asking yourself, what else do my customers want? Then start building other amazing things for them. Stay creative forever. Like an ice cream child. What a goddamn great post. It was the alcohol. The alcohol is working. Awesome post. Why do I get the feeling you have a hidden agenda? Obviously, you are doing this to share the love but I think you also are trying and going to prove another point action taking.
I've already copied your list onto a spreadsheet. Tonight, I will add aggressive deadlines to complete each action. This is perfect ICK in so many ways. Thank you and since your rep is looking a little low, you now got some coming your way. Leading by example as always very nice and representative example BTW, really organized. I have a feeling this is what Zen means when he says you impress the hell out of me with what you do to help people, keep going, this is you taking it to if keeps going. I imagine you climbing a big ice wall or glacier, and hacking in pegs. Everyone be like and you are like so tiring. Yet. Awesome. Go vodka. The glacier is the biggest ice cream cone of all. The path to a community of ice creamers. I really do love how you explain it. You don't have the omniscient knowledge on every topic, but you have the tenacity and the fire that is going to keep taking you higher. Don't stop. If you keep doing this, you'll eventually reach a point where you wanna throw in the towel. Don't. And you will achieve anything you put your mind to. Ice creamers never give up. And they get started on it today. I've been considering learning coding recently not for my current business or a handful of other businesses for a business I can only see myself being interested in in about 2017. I am wobbling on it, but I see it as a billion dollar clinch move. I was hugely conflicted about learning that much code while doing biz, but, I'm like gosh damn it don't give up on it, don't just hold it in your mind as a maybe if I had X. If it truly is a B opportunity imagine how much ice cream opportunity you can spread through the world it won't benefit me to learn code I can do fine without it, but if the idea was to be created and be real, it would need me to do a few of the little crucial parts of engineering. Stops. Wait, maybe I can just focus on the crucial engineering parts. So yeah. Anyways, the ice cream attitude makes those little distant dreams, be held accountable by acting today, by not giving in, and by continuing. My example is terrible. Since it suggests there are be opportunities in learning to code it's just the niche the opportunity is in is code heavy and I have no place there if I know nothing and it suggests that big ideas equals action they don't. They are absolute action fakes unless you know exactly what you are doing and are continuously simplifying the process but my intention is just to say, that you never give up, or never leave it ahead of you, you go for it. If you believe it can be done, go get it buddy. Cause if you are wrong, you will learn a better route. If you are right, you won't have wasted time. The issue for most that go out to get it done, is they are sour like a kid with his ice cream taken away. And they don't realize that by picking themselves up, dusting themselves off, you can get the ice cream back. Slap that bottle in hand, always reach forwards, pick up the ice cream smile, and champion forward. Keep going. For me, you set an example of an attitude I have both mastered and suck at. I'm mastered because I never give up be suck at, because I always do it half groaning so for me. You represent that same idea of going forwards but it is with ruthless positivity, and I screamy goodness which is better than how I have ever done it ha ha, always mopey. I've achieved a lot in my life outside of biz but I have truly learned from the ice cream attitude, it is such a gem. You are right, and ha ha, sometimes the only way I can achieve it is with drink in hand. And just saying f hash ck it, let's go. I greater than c greater than e greater than c greater than r greater than e greater than a greater than m go go go. Bookmarked for later. Thanks M8. Good points. If you read this post and thought oh well that's one way to do it but I can do it my way too and then you don't do anything. You're failing the basic message of the post and of ice cream kids whole mind set. Instead of say that thing above why don't you start making phone calls? Here's what keeps me going on phone calls. What if the next number I call is the first reaction in a chain that will lead to my financial freedom? If I ever lose faith I think of that and am dialing the next number before the thought ends. You have to want it. Thank you for the post, I'll be watching this post for the future.
Here is a template I used to fill in the as towers and deadlines for. Feel free to use as is, modify it, or laugh at it and hit delete. Thanks again, ICK. I think something like this happened recently. Guppy. Something I think. Must be good alcohol. Z. How do I drive traffic to my website or funnel by free methods other than guest posting or spamming? Why not accomplish steps 1 and 2 first before even theorizing about step 3? 1. If your niche is more of a local thing, get on Yelp and observe the reviews. Check who has a lot of reviews or many customers then pick up the phone and call them. 2. Join associations on LinkedIn and message the movers and shakers through PM there. It is imperative that you join associations so that you don't look like some random spammer. If you're in the same club as someone that you're trying to get in contact with then they're more likely to be open to speaking with you. Many won't respond so it is essential to follow up. Your response rate will rise drastically by the second and third follow up. Thanks for this tip, Jack Edwards. The most common form of resistance that you'll receive is, why should I spend my time with you? You have no experience in this niche. If they tell you this, here's what you respond with, you're absolutely right. I don't have experience, but I am currently in the process of interviewing 99 other people in your niche who do have experience and I'd be more than happy to share with you their secrets of how they move their business forward. I'm doing this. Thanks for the thread, ice cream kid. Brilliant. You're welcome. There's a reason why I'm not just pouring out all of the detailed action steps in one drop. People would see all of the many tasks involved and not even get started because the mountain in front of them looks too large to handle. A few steps forward daily will eventually get you to the top of that mountain. But I don't even have money for website or domain. I will just go back to reselling services for hire to get some starting money. You're not thinking about it in the right way. Don't consider the reasons you can't do something. Consider the ways in which you could. Have anything you can pawn? Ever checked out Amazon Turk? There are plenty of ways to make cider cash more quickly than reselling services. Don't limit yourself with a perceived barrier. Entrepreneurs that are successful ignore those barriers as they climb over. Yep M Turk doesn't work in my country. I'd about other similar sites there was a good site year ago Cloud Crowd or something. They paid direly on PayPal and they were available for everyone I did reselling once, I managed to get $30 in a week with guest posting so at least I know it works, I think I could get more but I killed my margins thinking no one would buy if I charged more than $8 $5 was the service. Websites are notoriously easy to create. You can make a free WordPress website and pay two to three bucks to get a nice theme or style for it. The rest is free and will work perfectly. Domain names aren't terrible either. Couple of bucks if you can opt for something that isn't a com or you can get creative with your name. Keep in mind we'll jack the price if you view a com and don't buy it right away. Namekeep is a better option in my opinion. As I was sending out some emails to some of the top people in my blog's field, it dawned on me even further how amazing this strategy is, you literally get free information and the ability to ask any question to the top people in your field. Furthermore, you now have a connection with the top people in your field. Awesome! Domain 10 minus 12 bucks WordPress free. If you define the world by what you can't do, it will look like that for the rest of your life. If you start to define the world by what do you have to do to get X, it will start to shape itself, accordingly Z. You know what's even more amazing? When it dawns upon you after the first 10 calls that there are people who actually want to talk to you. They're dying to tell someone about a problem they have that needs to be fixed. By messaging them directly through LinkedIn. You don't even have to deal with gatekeepers and end up only dealing with those who are eager to talk to you. All of the voices in the back of your mind fall away by the tenth call. I still remember those feelings. What if I'm annoying them? 
What if they're too busy for me? What if? What if? What if I told you that by the tenth call, you will have begun developing a very important skill that could free you from your job? How would you feel about those ten calls then? You literally end up freeing yourself from the little voice that anchors you down. Keep it moving. What if? In my demography folks don't read email and Facebook ranks number one or Facebook is their home page. Trying to be creative but unable to figure it out yet. Sent from my HTC desire using Taper Talk 2. Encourage site users to sign up and allow Facebook to be a quick or easier way someone can sign up instead of typing their email address, password, and additional info. I don't know who your demographic is, but if they don't read email and Facebook is their home page then I can only guess that you're targeting broke teenagers. Change your demographic to a more business-minded one. Here's another a benefit, you will actually learn about the topic you are covering simply by researching each person you interview. Your base of knowledge will grow. I guess people in Southeast Asia are generally broke than India. Could you expand upon the dollar 2k 3k in sales part? I don't really understand it, but I'm interested. You get pre-sales in order to fund the development of the product or service or software. It is best to have some type of working prototype or presentation when pitching for pre-sales. If memory serves me right, Jack uses PowerPoint. No need to get fancy. This allows you to start with very little money out of pocket and it validates demand. Got a test for demand before you spend your whole life savings on a project, bro. There's nothing worse than getting into a biz because you're doing what you love and finding out later on that the market doesn't give a damn about it. Try to be product agnostic and just fall in love with the process. When you do that, the path you are embarking on becomes enjoyable. Gold thread. This is exactly what I needed. Thank you so much. I have a few questions as well. For finding the top 100 performers, example say you're looking at the pet niche. Would it be better to look at vets, trainers, day camps, pet product CEOs, and try to impact the entire market or would it be smarter to be more specific and work on one group within that niche? You say to discuss sales and marketing techniques within the interview, are you trying to fill a need from this? Or are you as well asking them about any problems they may have within their field? I just saw that you say to build a website and PDF around their marketing techniques and then with the mailing list you have a potential list of customers. But an audience looking at marketing techniques wouldn't necessarily be interested in a new type or dog bowl or whatever the need is, right? I'm sorry if that's a dumb questions, just wasn't sure if I missed to link the two together or if it was supposed to be a given. Colon embarrassed. Thanks a ton for making this thread. Thanks so much for the awesome post, but I have a quick cue. Let's say my niche is landscaping. I would contact landscapers and ask them about their sales and marketing techniques. Then publish this on my site about landscape sales and marketing? So, really, I am initially positioning myself as a complete noob to landscape sales and marketing. Then, through this approach, I am positioning myself as an expert on landscaping sales and marketing, because I just learned from the 100 best. It seems like in step 2, where you say this, you can replace their best sales and marketing strategies with whatever it is you want to ultimately position yourself as an expert in. Say, hardscape and patio design. Then, instead of hearing and identifying their pains about sales and marketing, you are hearing and identifying pains about patio design. So steps 1 to 2 build trust. Step 3 to 4 builds your own authority. Step 5 plus identifies and eliminates pains of people in this niche, with which you just created authority. I just want to make sure I understand. This definitely seems like a long game. To get to step 5 sounds like it would take about 1 to 3 months work. Is that right? A simple yes or no you're right. Or you're wrong. Would be great. Just want to make sure I get it.
I see what you are doing there. You are becoming Oprah an authority by getting access to those in the know then you build your funnel. Lead magnet greater than drip wire greater than core offer greater than profit maximizer upsells greater than put them through the funnel again. Thanks for the share, I just started learning about this last week. It's such an eye opener. People always said the money was in the list, but they never explained how or why. I understand now. I know you don't actually want anyone to skip this, so I'm just gonna admire how well you nailed it in the hopes others may catch on and to drill it into my own brain. Do you want the shape of the world to change? Then this is the action you must take. Not gagging around. Saying no. Asking why. You want the world to change, you have to start defining your actions, breaking conventions, changing the way things happen. People might not change, but you will, and as a result, you'll be free. The net that catches you, is that your frustrations never really mattered that much, that most of what you feared, didn't have to be there. So, hone your focus, draw your eye, and look at what in this situation can be done. Let the frustrations slip, your eyes open, and push harder past the walls you put up to tell everyone why you can't. George, could you give me some more details? Like a blueprint or something with steps to follow that I can't fail. ICK, solid post once again. I'm going to jump right in and begin the journey. More action and less mental masturbation. For those of you that want a concrete example, Dane Maxwell lays out a concrete one on this podcast interview start at the 52 minutes mark, everyone that is reading this post. I think the point that ICK constantly drives home is to just do it. He has laid out a nice outline for us and it's up to each one of us to grab our balls reverse this for the females and take action. Commit yourself to take action first, figure out how second. I know we all think it will be great to have our hand held along the process, but I think what I'm starting to figure out is you will learn faster if you just commit to doing something even if you don't know how and believe in yourself that you will be able to figure it out along the way. This goes for anything in life. Sent from my iPhone using Taper Talk. There are many ways to dress your mistress. I'm more of a fan of trying to impact an entire market, but I believe that this strategy works more effectively when you drill down to a specific part within the niche. You are not trying to find a need through the discussion of sales and marketing techniques. The reason for discussing sales and marketing is so that you can provide awesome material for free to the traffic that comes to your website. This makes you an authority in the niche over time. Asking them about any problems they may be having is for the purpose of identifying a common pain that you can solve. If this new dog bowl results in the audience saving time, money, or frustration then who knows lol they just might want a new dog bowl. Jack Edwards once told me that the best businesses take the longest amount of time to throw off cash and that even those businesses have a 50% chance of being successful. So yay, I'm laying out something that will take time, but you have an extremely good chance at being successful with it if you simply put in the effort. By following the steps, you lower your risk drastically. I'm confused. Did I not give you 12 steps to follow in the very first post? Or were you looking for extremely detailed directions like what exactly to say during interviews, what questions to ask, how to set up a podcast? how to set up a website. I could probably put something together like that but it would take up way too much of my time and I pretty much have zero time right now. My current biz is expanding its product line and the guppy tank is on full throttle right now so there is very little time for anything. I created the tutorial as a general roadmap to give people a little bit of direction if they have zero dollars, zero ideas, zero network and zero knowledge. I'll do it in the future, but for now I want you to approach it from this mentality. LOL. Dude. I was joking. It was an awesome blueprint. You handed it out on a plate, and anyone asking for more needs shot. Thank you.
that helps a ton. 100% true. The first 10 calls are crucial. After them there is no more fear, no script needed, you just have a nice conversation. You make friendships. Also, after a few calls you can ask better questions dig deeper. I record every call so I can. 1. Focus entirely on my Patnil customer while calling. 2. Analyze the whole conversation later and make notes. Could you give an example of what kind of solution you could come up with? I mean, there's pretty much a solution for everything nowadays. And what if all 10 people have different problems requiring different solutions? I can't code to, so I'd have to outsource the production to Elans probably. But I guess it's just bringing this all together. It seems like a good idea but I can imagine a few months later with nothing more than insider knowledge of a particular industry, which is good in and of itself but not going to make money. Of actually building out something that more than one more person is going to find relevant and something that is actually unique and worth paying reasonable money for. This all makes it sound straightforward in theory, but... Asking 10 people for $2-3k up front for something that hasn't even been developed and assuming every one of them will be happy to do it is a bit naive. Have you done this yourself? Do you know that Bill Gates got pre-sale money from IBM and later became a billionaire thanks to the deal which got the ball rolling for him? Gosh, I guess he was a bit naive to believe he could pull that stunt off. There are those who will try to find reasons why something won't work then justify their lack of action with that. Then there are those who simply will make things work no matter what it takes. Good lord man, I created this thread to help people move forward with taking some action. All I'm seeing is people who don't even want to try. They just want to talk and talk about why shit won't work. Can someone please try, seriously? as in a real effort to try. Interview 100 people then come back. Worst case scenario, you lose approximately zero dollars doing this. That would be so terrible to lose zero dollars. If things don't work out, I'll give you your money back in the form of a check for the amount of zero dollars. I will try it. Have nothing to lose. Well sorry, I'm in a bit of rut right now belief system is out of whack. I may just try this approach. The above was a joke, so the poor op wouldn't have to do the below. It didn't work obviously. Op. Awesome first post. Thanks for taking the time to write up such a brilliant blueprint. You're spoiling us by handing it to us on a plate. Behind every failed biz there is usually an entrepreneur with a failed mental state. There's usually an unconscious emotion that's blocking. PM me if you need help with that. Or read the secrets of Zen Thread, you'll probably find a topic in there that can apply to your life. LOL. This is actually almost a carbon copy of the strategy that Pate Flynn is employing on his site. It's almost scary. And he is already pulling $80,000 a month not from, but just that he is willing to put in this kind of work even when he is making great money. Guess that's the difference between a doer and a daunter. BTW, I think buying traffic with ads might speed this shit up substantially, but you did say it's for those without money. Has he released any earnings on his site yet? Tell you what, ICK. I'll do it. Just to prove to everyone that just about anyone can do this and succeed. I have a product I'm working on, but I'll do this in the same niche, and if nothing else, it'll be great market research. So, nothing to lose. Except some fear. Because I feel that after doing something like this, and actually following through, being scared just isn't as big a deal. Because a lot of people seem to be focused on why this won't work, here are my limiting factors and that's in quotes because these factors really are just small hurdles to overcome. Everything is possible if you're willing to put the work and effort in, I'm having problems thinking of more, and this is why. If I did, nothing would ever happen. There's no denying that I'm busy. That I have two kids to take care of all day who often keep me up hours every night. 
We currently don't have a bunch of extra resources. I probably can't work as fast as a lot of other people, because I am always multitasking except when the kids are asleep. If I only looked at the negatives, I'd be in bad shape. I decided a while ago that I would always reframe negative thoughts and make them positive. For example, step 1, I am getting carried away. I like writing too much. TLDR, I'll do this challenge. No money down, except to pay for a domain and maybe some hosting. Oh, I think I'll make myself earn that money, too. Just to show that you really can do this with no money at all. Because, I know you can. Should I start a new thread or post here? Love your attitude Fiona. I did a video I think should help those who don't have that attitude. Forgive me linking to my site. I will upload it to Vimeo or YouTube and embed it in a post in here. Here's the video L edit, blimey. Nearly five years later this pops up because someone liked it. Here's the video embedded in a post as promised. He did an AdSense experiment last month and made like $100. This month, I noticed. He copy or pasted his resources page from SPI and put it on and has been blasting it with blog posts about the importance of a website so he is clearly pushing Bluehost, Thesis Theme, Odesk, Lead Pages, etc., all these things that give him a kickback. Clever. My son loved your son's video. He couldn't stop giggling. Not sure why, but I think it was a very cute little video. Thanks. For that and your video, as well. Feel free to post here or make a thread, either way is good to me. I have had this little post open so that I could write things down as I'm doing them, as I really want to document this process and show just how possible this all really is. It's also serving as a bit of a brain dump to get my thoughts out, I may as well post it if it's going to be useful to someone else. So. First thing I did was decide on the exact niche and the type of people I was looking for. The niche, do I want to do the same niche as the product idea I was starting to work on? I'm not sure. It's a very narrow niche. I picked my current product idea because I wanted to take action, but after evaluating it over a couple days, I have found it violated, it's not that scalable. So, I'm staying in the same general niche but zoomed out a little bit. Not quite as narrow, but narrow enough that people visiting the website will be still interested in the vast majority of the information there. The people I'm going to contact is, in all reality, pretty important, especially if I'll be interviewing them and posting about them on the website. I want people that are knowledgeable, be known them or their product, and see interesting. So. I made a list of the type of people I'll be looking at if you can think of more types of people that I haven't considered, please let me know, anyone have any comments or suggestions? I've started to put a list together of people, starting with companies and people I've heard of, then googling to find other well-known experts. I feel very uncertain of the niche, and because of that a little reluctant or nervous when it comes to going to the next step. I don't know if it's big enough the right type of niche, etc. I guess that's a reason to take action now, if it ends up not working out, I'll know sooner rather than later, right? Edit, I'm going to spend a little bit longer looking at the niche. After looking into it some more, I think I may have posted too quickly. I don't know if this niche will work out. I'm going to do some more research and get back to you all. Okay. Did a little more research using Google Trends and Google AdWords. Google Trends shows that natural toys, quality toys, and related keywords are declining in interest, indicating that this is a declining market though it seems to be declining pretty slowly, the niche I should be in for this would be something with a market that is getting bigger, not smaller. Toys in general, seems to be pretty stable, with large spikes at Christmas time. It's also a large market, with lots of people in that market. The child or kid play niche is really increasing. I knew this already. There is a huge movement to education being focused on play before a certain age, 
more research coming out about developmental states in kids, etc. I feel like this market could potentially really grow as more research comes out and the idea becomes more common. For this challenge, I believe it's a good niche. Lots of people to contact. There is a definite interest. And, because play-centered learning and different ideas about play are becoming more popular, I think it could be fairly easy to be seen as some sort of subject matter expert within a year or two, if I keep with it. So, for this little challenge, I'm doing this niche. No more changing, this is my final answer. At, sorry, I feel like I'm going to take over your thread if I'm not careful, or at don't apologize. The whole point of this thread was to get somebody to take action and you're doing it. Keep going. Quick update. It's just before 7am here, I'm putting my daughter back to sleep so I figured I'd let you know I'm already doing work today. Have been sending off emails since I woke up, already have one person willing to be interviewed I think I caught him at a good time, he replied immediately, so I'm writing out some questions as soon as I get back to the computer and sending those back to him. Today is a busy day, so I would like to contact 10 people, and start coding the website locally using WordPress and the thesis framework. I'll be gone most the morning and afternoon with the kids. When I get back I will try to contact more people and work on the website some more. I'll also be listing some things on Craigslist and maybe eBay to get some cash to pay for hosting and such. Sent from my iPhone using Taper Talk. At and at quick question in regards to learning copywriting. Is it really that important to learn copywriting versus learning to copy copywriting? As I was researching copywriting I came across several very similar copy examples of headlines and body content. Hell, the first top 10 copy headlines had this at number 2, the incredible secrets of underscore exposed, sound familiar? I guess, it seems more productive to build a mini database of the templates and just modify a bit and plug in your products. Thoughts? Thanks. At, this is just my opinion, I'm not an expert by any means, but, I think it's still valuable to learn copywriting. By just copying, you could probably create some pretty effective copy. Especially if you split test everything, track results, and figure out what's most effective over time. You would probably even be able to pick up a lot of the ideas behind copywriting by doing it this way. However, the biggest benefit I've gained from actually learning and studying copywriting is learning the mindset, figuring out why things work, the mindset of customers, how to market to different groups of people, which angle to take on certain products, some people get it intuitively, but I'm oh it's not something most people could learn just by copying what other people have done. You can copy a layout someone didn't put in your own info, but how do you know it's effective for your market? You really wouldn't, unless you know how to analyze that information. How do you know which, out of many, benefits you should focus on? Your customers have desires that they are hoping your product will be able to provide. Do you know these desires? Do you know the psychological background behind these desires? All of this changes how you write your copy. Even though copying layouts may seem like it's saving you time, I think in the long run, You'll waste a lot less time and be much more effective by actually learning copywriting. Basically, what she said. Lol on the outside, copywriting looks like nothing more than a bunch of catchy headlines. If you dig deeper, you'll find that it reveals to you the framework by which humans function. When you understand that framework, it is easier to identify products which could sell to the masses. I personally don't really enjoy teaching copywriting to people because it exposes the dark side of humans. The greed, ego, selfishness, need for instant gratification, laziness, all that is exposed when you learn copywriting. It literally will change the lens through which you view the world. When you walk around and see advertisements, salespeople, etc. you'll notice the tiny details about them that you wouldn't have noticed before. There is a dark side to almost everything, the yin and the yang. 
not that I'm an authority on the subject, I'm only on the fourth book in the challenge, but copy is basically psychology. Understanding the brain, how different fonts, words, colors, phrases, borders, placement, all affect how we view things and scientifically picking these things to grab the largest audience and generate the most business. Thinking about it as simply writing headlines and ads can make it sound pretty boring but once you see it's all psychology it becomes infinitely more interesting. I find many times when I'm reading I just don't want to put the book down. It's a great feeling when every page you read you really feel that you're learning something useful and interesting. This is exactly how I look at it. When I started writing copy I was just stealing everything. That's cool too. It's actually called swiping. All good marketers have a swipe file where they take copy that has converted them or that they know works for a similar market or idea and puts them into a file or Evernote notebook. Then when you need to appeal to that idea, you can reach into your swipe file. For example, if you are writing about an opportunity that has huge ROI, you can look at your swipe file for things that sell that idea. If it's something that saves time, you can swipe a letter that pushes that main idea. But you need to be able to take that copy and modify it for your needs. Even if you don't know what you're doing you can probably get some good conversions just by stealing or swiping copy with minimal adjustments. But if you want to blow it out of the water, you probably need to study copywriting and sales psychology a lot more to make your edits to your swipes really shine through. My two cents. Thank you for the thread at. Just going off of the thread's title, it made me think about whether you and the other legends here have any insights on being resourceful. I know there are a lot of you here who, even if you lost it all, you would be able to make it all back within a short period of time. Obviously depending on the country or place you find yourself in, the ventures you could pursue would be different. It's the know-how and know-what that is important in anything. It's like the Arabs and the oil situation. They have these natural resources that they've been sitting on for centuries but didn't know it was there, how or what to do with it, how profitable it could be etc etc until the West went in to tell them early 1900s. Obviously that is a big deal and the people who know what to do with it, will get in touch and they did. But still the Arabs may not know until this day what opportunity lies therein because they didn't know what they didn't know. So it's a question of how do you know what you can do with the resources you have at hand? How can you find out what you don't know? You are new to the place and everything in the title reflects your situation. What would you look for in your area? How would you be resourceful? This is a big question that I have pondered enough to last me three lifetimes. How do you know what you don't know? Here's what I would do. 1. Do my best to turn myself into a magnet. In other words, try to become the kind of guy that the people would want to work with. This means be an action taker, don't waste time, use your brain, and be resourceful. Oh yeah and be respectful. That's a huge one. I see too many people expecting things to be handed to them just because they breathe oxygen. 2. Read books. People have laid out everything that they learned in books. $10 is a small price to pay in exchange for someone's life learnings. You can either pay for experience monetarily or pay for experience with time and failure. 3. Ask somebody for help. There are some people who have so much knowledge about a vast array of topics, it's amazing. Bottom line, the best way to find out what you don't know is to take action. Action gives the answers that theory cannot solve. Here's an example of how action gives you the key to realizing what you don't know. This all happened over the span of two weeks BTW. 1. Got accepted into Zen Escopy Tank. Within one week I realized it's way better to travel with a pack of wolves. 2. While creating my Amazon seller account, I realized I need to set up an LLC. I didn't know how to do that because my uncle always set up my LLCs so I had to learn. Accomplished within three days. 3. 
While dealing with manufacturers in China, I found out that all of them refused to ship to a residential home so I learned that I needed to get a UPS box for $15 a month. My point is this, if I just sat in my room thinking about the business in my head, I never would have found out that I needed all of these things, the wolf pack, how to create an LLC, what to get before dealing with manufacturers, etc. I still don't know what I don't know and I'm perfectly content with that. Just got to keep taking action daily. That's the motto. People want all of the steps laid out in front of them before they make even one move. That's not how the game works. So if you want to know what you don't know, just make a move and everything will fall into place. Keep it moving. Jump off the cliff and learn to fly on the way down. Your man, ICK. Hi Fiona, I think I know what you are seeing here in trends. When you look at a lot of industries and keywords over time it looks like a decline if you assume that the graph is expressing total keyword search volume over time. However, Google Trends is actually showing you how much search there is for a keyword so even if keyword search volume has grown over time, if it has grown slower than total Google search volume, you will see a declining graph. Given how fast Google search per day volume has grown over the last decade, this makes sense. A Google employee recently told that on a daily basis, the algorithm is seeing 16% of searches being completely new, never searched before queries, so quality toys have most likely seen a massive search growth over time, trends just will not show you that. It is a tool best used for identifying seasonal search trends. Hope that is useful. Thank you, At. I hadn't used the tool in the past, and I guess I failed to do the research to figure out exactly how it worked. Thanks for the clarification. I thought it seemed odd, as I had been seeing more and more stuff in that niche, lately. What is your opinion on this book? Is it sufficient to learn copy? I haven't read that book. I would start here dash. Sorry should read the whole thread till finish opportunity for a better forum software. Just wanted to say that this has become a massively useful thread. Holy shinookies I need to update this thread with more actionable steps. I'm going to be doing a free conference call teaching copywriting soon btw. Where do I sign up? I'll let you know. I'm super busy in the guppy tank right now. No lie, as soon as I think I have a solid understanding of the chaos being taught in there, they throw more action items at us and the chaos continues. I hate it, but I love it. I love 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 it. Update, mentor told me not to learn code thought about it long and hard, and I'm going to learn code. I know I know, coding is stupid. But you know what stupid really is? Quitting ahead of time cues it's tough. Why is this relevant to the thread? Cues no one can give you the step by step guide. Unless you make the choice to follow it and ask. When given the choice between two visions one a guy that gets decent at biz and starts launching, and learns code to get into the niche still kinda puking that I made this decision btw and then launches the most successful xyz site ever to a guy that gets decent at biz and then floats around on the decision and only outsources, wavering and stuck in insecurity, launches second best website of xyz. I just have to say f hash ck it, taking it all the way and being resilient is who I am. And since I made that choice, I have to accept all the consequences, all the beatings all the ong what an idiot. Shame me up, cues it still is worth it. Decide slowly, execute without question. Ask yourself what you will regret more, long term. Chances are, that if you have thought it out well, the one you regret most is not taking action. Again, code is not action, for me it's only and singular use, is competitive advantage cause I know what I'll be able to do to take it a step beyond it is a choice. What is better? Not generally, but for you. Will you accept it in its horrific truth? Or will you hide and run away? Blaming others for why you didn't make it. 
own your own decisions. Then make them happen. Quick update. Internet hasn't been working too well, so haven't gotten quite as much done as I would like. I'm only at 50 people so far, quite a few I don't think I have real good contact information for contact forms seem to be pretty prevalent, generic emails. I'm having the most trouble with the bigger toy companies Hasbro, Lego, Melissa, and Doug, who obviously don't see the benefit of being interviewed by a website that hasn't even been started yet. Haven't been able to get a hold of upper management for any of the bigger companies yet, but the teachers that I've contacted seem more receptive I guess they don't get nearly as many interview requests. Stats, interviews, yes, 3-2 teachers. 1 association no, 1 1 author later, 1 1 teacher, after website is live the rest haven't replied to emails. I'll need to try to contact them again. Haven't actually gotten any interviews back, yet. I figured out the basic website layout, and have started to put it together. There is definitely a bit of fear, here. I'm still scared of actually picking up the phone years and years of ingrained habits, here. I'm trying to figure out how to best overcome that obstacle I'm thinking of starting with one simple step, one phone call, idea extraction, interview request, I don't really care, a day, then, once I can do that, start doing more phone calls. Another obstacle has been gatekeepers I assume, as people aren't replying or simply not having an interesting enough request for these altogether busy individuals. I'm going to start treating these emails like a piece of copy. See what type of email gets the largest amount of replies. I've never done this before in the past, I've just started posting and adding content to the website, then interviewing people that I already knew so the learning curve seems pretty big. Not insurmountable, though. Definitely not. If your emails adhere to industry averages, you should get roughly a 5% response rate to your first email. By the third follow-up, the response should skyrocket to 20%. Be encouraged by the fact that it's not super easy because that means less competition. Equals P most people are quite kind and respectful so keep that in mind when reaching out. If you want to avoid gatekeepers altogether then just use LinkedIn. This is exactly what marketing is all about. Test, test, test. Then when you find something that sticks, nail and scale. Keep going. You're awesome. If your emails adhere to industry averages, you should get roughly a 5% response rate to your first email. By the third follow-up, the response should skyrocket to 20%. Be encouraged by the fact that it's not super easy because that means less competition. Equals P most people are quite kind and respectful so keep that in mind when reaching out. If you want to avoid gatekeepers altogether then just use LinkedIn. This is exactly what marketing is all about. Test, test, test. Then when you find something that sticks, nail and scale. Keep going. You're awesome. I wane learn both I should quit doing mechanical automotive stuff but unsure what job or career should I switch to. It takes years to either learn code or copy. Sent from my HTC desire using tape or talk to. No one can make your decisions for you. Decide long and slow and write out negatives and positives to each choice then be realistic in what each choice requires and what payoffs there are. Learn copy. That'll get you ahead. Code is a much more abstract choice. I'll tell you that, even the best in the world make many failures, and that it can take hundreds of thousands of dollars and several years, to properly launch the best websites in the world. Why bother with it when you can get a good website for 2k? Years and years to develop a website. Do you really care about doing that? Unless you have a clear path to reward that is not delusional I'm still half thinking I'm delusional I think that code is painful. Learn it as a hobby if you like and are into it. I'd stick to copy, as it's more flexible, and utilizable in biz. Just wanted to chime in here. I've been doing my own reaching out and have been keeping detailed reports of who has responded.
who's been interviewed, etc. I've so far emailed or Facebook messaged or website contacted 43 industry experts. 20 have responded. I've sent interviews to 19 of them, and received 5 responses with answers. Tonight I'll be hitting up another bunch of people in an effort to get to 100. Test your email subject lines. Make sure you do a tad bit of research, find a commonality somewhere same city or I get 100% response for any fraternity member Kappa Sigs anyone I've ever reached out to etc. Check out with Brian, tons of great stuff, Google his name and interview to hear some of his tips being interviewed on podcasts. Download banana tag extension. It tells you when an email gets open 5 free a day. Use that data to see which emails get opened and then responded. Keep emails short. If they are local, meet them, especially the more you have in common, the easiest it is to start the convo when you meet and keep it going. Use LinkedIn as it said, trick, if you can't send them a message due to LinkedIn membership find a group they are in dot dot join it then you can message them for free he he linkedin will catch that loophole at some point hope that helps keep it up fiona exclamation mark at fiona sent from ismn 900 v using taper talk thank you for the reply i have one more question how do you get past the mind trap that i'm currently experiencing when you think you have found a need or a problem to solve or a product to sell Why do you think it is your duty to provide or solve this problem? Cater to this need. Why do you think it is you who needs to do this? Why you? When you don't have the experience or knowledge. I have this voice in the back who makes me feel as though it shouldn't be me but someone else. I know one can do a SWOT analysis or something but still what if you don't have any major strengths? Do you just think about the way your life could change if you empower yourself? Look at the money that could be made and just pursue? Sometimes I feel as though I shouldn't even pursue the fast lane because it seems like a big daydream, a fantasy, or just mental masturbation. This is so common. I struggle with this so much. And when you start producing, people will question your right to do so, and try to tear you down. The truth is you can learn anything, and be a world-class expert in it within a year. Not all things, but many things, especially if you are specializing very heavily. As you start to talk to more people, you become an expert. And why you? Well, because you're the only one with the guts and drive to do it. That makes you part of 1% of 1% of the population. There's a reason books selling real entrepreneurship don't sell. Because only 1 in a 10,000 people would actually give a damn. You happen to be one of them. And you're doing something. That's why you should be doing it and not anyone else. Not just because you can. But because you will. At, I am not exactly following your step-by-step plan but have been following Dane Maxwell's theory over the past few months. During this time I have called over 300 to 400 companies in about 4 industries with about a 10% response rate for those still worried picking up the phone, the fear definitely diminishes after each call you make and you'll get much more confident about it. The majority of these calls have been in 2 industries only. In the niche I am currently investigating I have found a problem related to planning several companies experience but it only applies to those companies which have between 2 to 30 employees. They want software which helps them manage recurring jobs and perhaps even include invoicing. Bigger companies need and use more expensive and complex software where they also complain about which the smaller companies are hesitant to spend that much money on and also mention it's too complex for their current business size. I still need to continue investigating some more to find explicit requirements, but given the fact that you and with you others advise to find the industry leaders, I am wondering if it's the right path I am on now? Will these smaller companies still be a good market, considering the fact that smaller companies have less to spend and there are only about 3k companies of that size in my country? 
at talking to the market leaders is good because they are often the most ambitious companies or people in your niche. When you talk to the average Joe, there is a good chance he is just okay with what he has already achieved. I've been there. The leaders can see the things the majority can't. The leaders just want to see more in order to be more successful. They subconsciously know there is a better solution to their pain somewhere. I'm not telling the smaller companies are not good for you, though. They can be your specific niche. When I was extracting ideas in attorney niche, I've noticed that many big companies were playing in the other league. Often, they have their own IT systems which they were enforced to implement. But conversations with them were always the eye-opening ones. Remember the first time you tried to walk, probably fell right on your ass. Think about how easy it is to get up and walk right now. This is what everyone is referring to when they say it's a process. Sure, you don't know anything about a certain subject, but you can learn, right? So you decide you're going to create a printing company. What's the first step? What's the 10,000th? Well you might be able to answer the first step, but you have to learn to walk before you even know what the 100th or 1,000th step is. It's all a process. Find a need, study that until you have no more questions, keep moving, learn to walk. If you're worried that someone will call you out for not knowing anything, stop fearing it, it will happen. I had a guy laugh in my face a couple of months ago. Now I'm a little better at what I do, in a year I'll be much better. Saw so this was one of the most liked threads of the last three months, worthy of a bump, and a gold. Holy shit, how did I miss this gem of a quote? This will literally change someone's life. Read this, and reread it, twenty times if you have to, until you get it. I didn't think Zen could blow me away, anymore. This is one of the truest statements I've ever seen anywhere. This is literally the key to getting whatever you want in life. This post is so 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 valuable. Those action steps are exactly what lead to value being created. Love it I see K. If I get stuck with my current idea then these are the action steps I am going to follow for sure. I'm not sure where you are in your life because we've never met, but I would only follow these action steps if I had no money, no ideas, and no network. The reason why is because this strategy often leads you to getting a small bite of a small niche market. There's nothing wrong with going this route and you can probably exit your job with this method, but if you have some cash then I'd put it towards getting a small bite of a large market. It's easier to make larger chunks of money if you're attacking a big market. Thanks for the reply ICK, clarifies a lot, I know what I need to do. This is where my life is at the moment, this is how Barbara Corcoran grew her business, only she sent the report to the New York Times and they published it. Worth a listen if you have an hour. Thanks for the post ICK. I'm starting to reach out to my top 100 today. Can't wait to see where this takes me, I'd love to be able to quit my job and focus on larger scale projects. My market is pretty large so hopefully if I work hard I can use this to quit. If not and I take it to its limit and I'm not quite there I can always start another similar site and combine the income from the two. Time to stop looking for barriers and get to work. Genuinely an inspiring and informative post. I am going to follow the steps listed, I am unsure as to where it will lead me but I am sure the process will enhance my own entrepreneurial development. The only part that I am consistently unsure of is niche. Choosing a niche seems like one of the hardest parts. I realize that you can use Google Trends and keyword tools to identify markets, but I'm still unsure on the best way to come up with ideas for the research. As MJ writes in the book, Choosing a business based on personal passion is foolish if there is not a need in the market, yet I am unsure about which market to jump into. It's always a difficult decision. I saw it's you identify some growing markets which have money to spend and are not overly complicated. Then pick the niche you can be most passionate about. And then don't doubt anymore, research the hell out of it. 
cold email or call the hell out of it. And if it doesn't pick up any momentum, drop the niche and start in a new niche. The important thing is to focus and not give up too easily. You'll know when it's time to give up on a niche. Thanks mate. Another question I have, is how important is talking on the phone? I work full time, and the only real time I have to discuss is during lunch break and after 6 p.m. I suppose I could schedule calls for around midday and try to get them in during lunch. Talking on the phone is very important. You cannot do idea extraction through email as you need to dig thoroughly to find the exact pain or need you are going to solve. You also need to get used to talk to business owners. I don't know what kind of job you have, but you can do the following. Once you have a successful idea extraction call don't forget to ask for references. This will make contacting new business so much easier. And never forget that it's not about you, it's about them. Thanks for taking the time man really appreciate it. Now to find a niche. Sent from my iPhone using Taper Talk. Thanks for taking the time man really appreciate it. Now to find a niche. Sent from my iPhone using Taper Talk. I thought this might be a neat little trick to help people find email address for CEOs and other decision makers if you are trying out some of the ideas in this thread. I played around with it for a few minutes tonight and it worked. Rep transferred? Awesome thread. I love it. Update, I'm starting to do this. Are you guys getting this to work with the new Gmail Compose? How would you suggest to finding a niche? Is it something you're interested in? For example I wanted to stick to the optometry niche as I enjoy it but since I'm in Australia there are less than 1000 practices which seems like a limited market. Damn I totally forgot that I made this thread. For me personally, finding a niche is more of an art than a hard science. I look for an industry that is currently in an expansion phase. The leaders in the industry are spending lots of money on hiring, sales or marketing and product or service production. Open up the newspaper and you'll find many articles on which industries are growing. Although passion is an awesome benefit to have for an industry, I'm niche agnostic. Instead of being passionate about a specific industry, become passionate about helping people. Then you'll do fine in any industry. Do you think it will be bad if I wanted to pay most of my attention to international experts? I mean here in Greece it's hard to find more than 5 top performers. I can shoot straight for the stars by asking guys in USA, UK and Australia. Brilliant topic man. Really brilliant. My Teespring trial will be put on a hold for the holidays and with your thread I instantly got motivated to research a field I am interested at. Maybe we should make a how a crazy guy selling ice cream can help you escape the rat race challenge? So I started taking action. I chose a niche that I like and talked 50 and 30 minutes talks with two Greek professionals. I got some nice material. Next, I started joining LinkedIn groups and sending messages. Here is the template I used, maybe others can use it as well, cheers. You have to add in that template a benefit for the person you're sending it to. Tell them that they'll get exposure. Tell them what the benefits of getting that exposure can be for them. Make them feel like they're contributing to something they do not give a damn. If you want to interview them for yourself just to get their sales and marketing strategies. Then I was freaking weak. Thanks man, I will rewrite it and I will stop spamming this thread. I actually didn't even understand what that meant. The wording is kinda confusing if I didn't understand it, maybe they didn't either. Word it more simply okay, let's not get this thread off topic, go do what you gotta do. I just saw this post last Friday, and a parallel from my own life struck me. About three years ago, a friend turned me onto a book called Convict Conditioning a Calisthenic Strength Building Program. The author has you start out very very easy but ramps up step by step until you can do what he calls the master steps one handed push ups, one handed pull ups, etc. Anyway, the specifics of it aren't important. 
what's important is what happened as I did these exercises over and over and over. At first, all I knew about the exercises was from the book. I had never done most of them. But, I read the descriptions and fumbled through them. I tweaked a few muscles, because even though I had read about how to do it correctly and watched videos about how to do it correctly, my body and mind didn't know what it felt like to do it right. I didn't have the experience. But after about a year, the techniques started to internalize. The form became second nature, and I started to fine tune each exercise. I intimately understood the process. After three years, I now know exactly what it takes for me to build strength. Although I go off and on depending on my level of motivation, I understand what to do. I know that I can pick up at any time and start building strength right away. The only variable at this point is how much effort I decide to put into the process. I'm guessing that entrepreneurship is the same way. That this is what was talking about. At first, it's all academic knowledge. We've read the books and threads, and watched all the videos. But through the first couple of years, we trip and fall. Some things work, and some things don't. You tweak a few muscles. But after a while, you build the right mindset. It starts to internalize and becomes second nature. You look at a situation and immediately see what value you can add, and you know how to make it happen. And what you end up with is a process by which you can build wealth almost at will. That's why guys who learn how to build wealth can build it back again if they lose it. You know them, the ones who are somehow able to get lucky time after time. If I hadn't given my rep to other influencers, it would be all yours. Thanks for this post. Found a niche, emailed 10 of the head honchos so far and received some great replies. So excited I can barely type. You the man. Edit, to anyone else doing this, a huge accelerator for me has been including a bonus question along the lines of, who in the niche world is considered a superstar? Someone even the most accomplished niche professionals look up to? This gives you more people to talk to, and an easy referral to start your next email I was referred to you by another niche pro at the end of our interview using that referral line in my second batch of emails doubled my response rate. Kudos on taking some action. Keep going. Whoa. I totally forgot I created this thread. Good job on the progress, my man. Post questions here if you need help. I'm on hyper-focus mode with my biz right now, but I'll squeeze in time for you whenever I get the chance. I'll be sure to ask for help if I get stuck. So far Google and trial and error have been keeping me going. Thanks again. Your post, along with the mental shift from how can I make money to how can I make other people money has been game-changing. Stoked. Extraordinary wealth initiative sent from IM2 using Taper Talk. Just a quick thought in case anyone starts down this path. Doing step 2 before step 1 might be a good idea so long as you don't waste too much momentum putting the website together. Since I've got the website up, even with no content on it, I'm getting something more official about Versus. Just a quick splash page. About page, and here is where the content will be page has helped me get more better quality interviews. Just my two. Which are Canadian and not actually worth shit right now. This is in my top five of the best threads on the entire forum but it took me months later after chasing the next shiny object to find this out. It takes nine months to make a baby. I wonder how many people can stick with one biz for at least nine months without looking at other businesses to start. We all pretty much know what we need to do. Just got to get out there and go do it. Well I did stick with something and it's thanks to your thread that changed my life man. Over the few months I have been here I jumped from and went down in flames in pretty much everything because I chased after these for the wrong reasons and posted a lot of procrastinatory BS progress threads even why I took so long pisses me off anyway, I am not a major success but I hope I can show the potential Mr. Skeptics that this shit works. You can make money the very same day like I did.
I went from shoveling dirt in a ditch making maybe $20 a day and now make a decent enough income and can soon start funding my, all in the space of one freaking week. It doesn't even have to be complicated. Choose your market or niche, contact the businesses, be pleasant, remove the pain and make money. Worse that can happen? Someone telling you no or not interested all you need is time and a pair of balls. No SEO watching paint dry, saving up for PPC, waiting months for a sale like I did. It's basically free. Following the advice is how I even paid for my insider's subscription lol. The real I'm a here isn't the 1234 steps that has laid out but the principles behind the steps that you can use to sell anything, you just have to think out of the box and utilize the he dropped here. At the moment I feel as if I could sell ice to an Eskimo but have my sights set on scaling to the moon and automation then again I'm so busy right now filling the pipeline dollar know what the kicker here is? I don't even live in the US and again it cost me nothing to start. Finally. The confines of my email box is nice and safe too but picking up the phone got me out of cold rain shoveling crap all day long. Learn from my mistakes and ignorance and go make some sales guys, today. It's more than possible it's inevitable. I suppose I could post my journey, but I don't think this forum needs another progress thread. I'll spare you the details and cut right to it. I'm only at step 3, so take all of this with a huge grain of salt. If you decide to do this, here's what's working for me, I. Read wrap your head around the tuna analogy. Buy it here, 2. Learn copywriting. Do so here, 3. Discover and decide on XYZ niche. This is a great resource, F credit to Jason for sharing it with the forum you could also try googling unusual habits, or dirty jobs, or weird hobbies. Build a big list of niches and validate them using the above PDF. Then bite the bullet and decide on one. 4. Learn how to set goals. Yeah I know. It sounds dumb. I made an Excel adaptation of MJ's one thing goal sheet. It helps me stay on track and spend my day doing productive things. I suggest you find some way to track your progress or it gets to feel like a monumental task. Pretty straightforward. My thoughts, that's all I can think of right now. I'll come back and edit this post as I remember more. Before I go, here are the numbers. Finally, at the end of the day, remember that you are creating a website that is valuable to your following. I have a feeling that one day your following will evolve into your customers. But don't focus on that. Forget sales. Forget making money. Remember your goal is to create content your following will love. Do that and nothing else. Except like, go outside once in a while. You say learn copy. Is the Gary Halbert challenge the best way to learn? Finding a niche seems to be the hard part, nope. Just my opinion, but I think the Gary Halbert challenge is overkill. I feel like if you wish to finish that challenge on time, you have to be writing copy for 8 to 12 hours a day. The number one focus for a new biz should be customer acquisition. Locking yourself in your room all day writing copy is somewhat of an action fake. Copy is one of many tools to help you acquire customers, but simply writing copy for days on end won't directly bring in the money. We cannot truly call ourselves biz owners if we don't even have one customer. For me, finding a niche is the easiest part. The hardest part is customer acquisition because it's 50% art and 50% science. I think that's why you'll probably never find a step-by-step -step plan that is guaranteed to work 100% of the time. The art part of the process is the one that takes time to master and is always evolving. I'm still learning every day. The majority of my posts here were written in early 2014 and I have changed by leaps and bounds since then. I think the biggest change is that I have a much more heavy focus on the bigger picture and how my direct response marketing fits into that. Wow! 
Another gem from the take out the words writing copy and replace it with watching courses on the same topic you're spent watching for the last six months, reading the blogs of gurus in your niche or moving a pixel back and forth for a month till you have a website that is pixel perfection or 101 similar tasks and you've got the number one killer of an entrepreneur before they've even hatched. Doing busy work, instead of focused hard work, putting what you've learnt into action does it again. It's where most come unstuck because they want it to be 100% one way or the other. People either want a system that they don't have to deviate from, or want to be able to wing it and hope for the best. I can personally testify neither of those options work, I feel kinda lost at the moment for what direction to take or what to do next I thought copy might open some doors but if not I'm at square one. T for taking the time to respond. Step 1, make a profile on Upwork Step 2, apply to transcript gigs at low rates because you said you type well Step 3, get jobs, get paid, repeat handle everything else after you start moving. This, I can totally connect with the feelings of being lost and not knowing your direction. Has it right with his suggestions? When you're lost it tends to be because you've not been exposed to the niche or area that really is going to connect with you or that you're just not able to deconstruct what your limiting belief or sticking point is. Sometimes just knuckling down and getting on with work in the meantime can make the world of difference. This is because it either because it exposes you to people and things that suddenly make it a lot clearer. Or alternatively you really hate it and from there you can pull apart all the reasons why you feel that so passionately which should then reveal what you really do want. It's asking for questions like professional title no clue what to put there. And overview. Not trying to bog you down with questions just really not sure what I should say. Before someone posts the link that Google's answers for you, I'll say this. Entrepreneurship starts with a drive for independence and self-sufficiency. How will you run a business if you can't start without step-by-steps for your step-by-steps? This isn't to be mean. But if you don't confront this most basic of all entrepreneurial issues right now, you're gonna have a hard time around here. Your professional title. What do you do? If you want to do transcription then you put something like, or etc. Here's where I found an answer to my business question today before visiting the forum. Title 3, Higher Education Greater Than Subtitle Gene on Baccalaureate System Greater Than Chapter 132. Career Schools and Colleges Greater Than Subchapter A General Provisions Greater Than But Before I got to that I had to become aware this education code even existed. That started with a Google search for a general term that led to a website that led to a link that led to a page that led to a PDF. This is true, I have never transcribed before so it just feels kind of phony but I guess I can use that as my title. The details these transcribers put in their overview wow I have no experience so I'm going to have to embellish a lot I think I got it though. The bottom line for a customer of yours is not whether or not you have experience. The bottom line is the quality of the finished product. Even a beginner can produce a good finished product. Make your customers excited to use you because of the output you do, and you can charge a premium for your service. Do everything you can to earn 5 star reviews. I've hired a few freelancers on no desk or elance or upwork, etc. I pay a premium to people that do a good job. I'd rather pay $10 to $20 an hour and have a menial job done right the first time than pay someone $3 an hour and have to spend 5 hours of my time working with them to get it right. Whatever ad copy you write, it needs to make the person hiring you feel like you would do a good job for them. There's nothing phony about you busting your butt until the job is done well. Pretty soon, you'll have experience. But that experience really only benefits you in that it takes you less time to produce the same quality work. On another note, I'm about in your same shoes with copywriting. I wrote some copy for my business and it wasn't getting any traction. I posted it in a forum here asking for feedback. I got plenty, and then I went and rewrote everything based on the feedback. 
I'm still refining it, but by actually writing copy that I'm actually using to sell my services, I've learned a lot more than what I would learn by just reading a book. Practice. Make educated guess about things you're not sure about the professional title question you had above. See if what you did works. Get feedback. Repeat. Side note, I'm guessing that if someone held a gun to your head and told you to tell them what a professional title was, you'd come up with a pretty good answer. Entrepreneurship is all about making educated guesses, testing to find out if it works, and then improving for next time. Hey Austin, I just started up work a few days ago and realized a few things pretty quickly. One no matter how great or useless you think you are in real life everyone is a baby when they start on up work. No reviews, no proof of skill. This has good and bad points. Good equals anyone can build a great reputation for anything based on results not whether you're a whole of a boss likes you or not. Bad equals you are a baby no matter if you have real life experience in a field or not, so you've got to start at the bottom and work your way up. 2. Stop thinking about what you haven't got. Think about what you have. You are typing on here, you have perfect English, you have a desire to succeed. You have an internet connection and power to your laptop. Do you know how many people that automatically puts you ahead of? Billions. And the English puts you streets ahead of thousands on Upwork. 3. In the beginning be humble. Take a job that someone needs doing quickly, write a great but quick proposal, charge half of what their budget is. Deliver an amazing piece of work. Anyone with basic English can transcribe well, just care. Make sure the client can't do anything else but give you 5 stars. Now that is worth everything at this point. Don't think about $1,000 a week, pay your dues to get started and build quickly from there. 4. Love your clients. 5. You can do it. Well thanks everyone for your advice. After looking at some of the top transcribers overviews I think I made a pretty decent one. I am waiting for approval right now. I have applied for my first few jobs. I try to keep the cover letter very you-centered. Not exactly sure all I should say since it only a transcribing job but I am trying to assure them I can meet their needs. We'll see what happens. Hey! I started with the process two weeks ago. I've built a website and I'm interviewing top 100 performers in e-commerce in Poland owners of online shops. I already published two interviews and by the end of the week I'm quite sure that I will have six of them. Still looking for a problems in my niche I will let you know about the progress. Thanks for the thread. Do you have any updates about your progress? Love to read it. Hey, going to be starting this very soon. As soon as I decide the niche. My one question is, is it possible to work with two different niches or two closely related niches? or a niche then can benefit or help the other and do the same process for both niches at the same time. Since I wanted to stop waiting around and take action I was thinking of choosing three different niche at once and taking the top 50 from each or is it better to stick to one? Lastly, is learning copy necessary? I have been putting it off for about a month now. Like you stated above the challenge would be an overkill what's another way to learn copy? Thanks in advance and thanks for this thread. I think the best way to learn copywriting to take some lessons and just start. Fail fast. And learn from it. Welcome to the forum. This is spot on. Alternatively, shell out some cash and hire a copywriter. The man who chases two rabbits at the same time usually ends up with learning copy is one of the fundamentals of business. It's like learning how to bounce pass in basketball. Can Michael Jordan do fine without the bounce pass? Probably. Will knowing how to bounce pass help increase his odds of success? Absolutely. There are no shortcuts. Put in the time. Focus. Reflect every day about what you can improve on. Don't wait long. Go. Thank you, going to start on learning copy tonight and just going to do it. 
also plan to have my niche by this Sunday and start contacting the top 100 in the niche the following day. Thank you for this thread and reply. Time to get a taste of this ice cream. So grateful for this thread and the knowledge provided. I have said it before, when you need advice this forum magically makes a thread appear with everything you will need to know. Perfect amount of breadcrumbs here to follow without having too much that you sit down and start eating sandwiches. Oh dear. Oh dear. I just spent nearly an hour and a half absorbing this entire thread. I had perused it briefly upon initially joining this forum, but I don't think I was mentally prepared to accept its knowledge at that time. I just recently started fumbling around working a similar, yet vastly inferior, process and, to be honest, I've still been dancing around on the outskirts. I've not actually done anything. And, while I know this was not directed toward me exactly, I put myself in the position to believe I had a man who was looking me square in the eyes and telling me, step up. This thread was like an enthralling novel. I kept pouring through the posts until there were no more to be read. As a result, it's now past my bedtime but, unfortunately, I have just accepted the bittersweet commitment to take action now. Tonight's gonna be a long night and tomorrow's gonna be longer, but I'm confident the payoff will be exponentially more worthwhile. Thank you so much for this. Hey, first off I just want to thank you for all the amazing value your threads provide for not only myself, but for a lot of people on this forum. I really admire how much you care about helping other people. Providing value is one of the things I love to do too. Just to see the smile on the person's face afterwards is an amazing feeling. With all that off my chest, I got a couple questions for you. I've come across some of your other threads and you say learn copy, but in this one you said the Gary Halbert challenge would be too much overkill. I don't plan on finishing the challenge in 30 days, that does seem like a action fake to me as well. But what should I do in between reading the books? Should I read and freelance as I go? I want to grasp copywriting before I go out and help clients with their copy. I have already made an account on Upwork, just have to write out my profile. But even with reading, it feels like I could be doing other things throughout the day as well. I don't know, but just reading doesn't feel right to me. Yeah, I'm proud to be reading and learning, but it seems like there's a piece missing. Any suggestions? Disregard, posted same thing twice. Hey I just wanted to notify you of some of my progress, and follow up because I said earlier that I would be applying this. I just shot an interview with Joel Brown, creator of, a site which has reached over 86 million views all time, and 3 million plus page views a month, on the topic of building up your personal brand. He's one of many experts I will be interviewing, and I've already compiled the top 50 authorities in this self-development niche, created an 8k plus word post, and created the downloadable list and infographic that can be given away. I will continue to offer value through email opt-ins like you suggested when I go out and shoot more of the interviews. Thanks for the gold here, and I will keep applying it. If you're curious. You guys can watch the interview here, I'm excited to keep it rolling and keep contributing value for people who are looking to train their mind, master the inner game of entrepreneurship, and keep progressing. Thank you for the game plan, Evan. Yo is the goat tbh, I'll def start this right now soon as I find a field other than music to focus on. Love this post. Thank you. Very inspirational post. Looking at this comment wouldn't they company you did the interview with be annoyed that you have posted a discussion of their best sales and marketing strats? I stumbled upon this thread today by accident, but thank goodness I did. I am a big fan of Dane Maxwell's methodology behind starting businesses, and this thread confirms this process. This week I have accumulated a list of 200 local business owners names and email addresses that are specific to my niche. I was planning on emailing them to schedule idea extraction calls, not interviews. 
However, after reading this thread I believe it will in fact be more beneficial to build an audience or customer list first by simply providing them with valuable content free of charge. This technique almost seems counterintuitive at first, but it makes sense to provide them with value to first to gain their trust. Loving while expecting nothing back in return is the quickest way to build trust with clients. What is everyone using for an outbound email provider? I did some research and it seems MailChimp is the best option for a free account. Perhaps I will jump to quick mail once things pick up. Any advice for jumping into a niche that is already fairly crowded with podcast interviews? I'm thinking it may be hard to stick out from the crowd when some others have been in the niche for many years already. This thread is loaded with amazing advice. Thanks ICK and for such actionable steps. I'm convinced and are the same person, or simply that great minds think alike. Check out by Dane back in September 2013. You ever see ICK and Dane in the same place at the same time? Didn't think so. I doubt that Dane and are the same person. I trust ICK. I know, I know. It was a joke. I trust him as well. As much as I can trust a person I have never met but gives extremely good entrepreneurial advice on the internet for free. In fact, ICK is a great example of providing value free of charge to build trust. If ICK had something to sell me it wouldn't take any convincing. LOL I am most definitely not Dane Maxwell. For those of you who know my full name and please don't post it here, you can actually do a Google search and you'll find a podcast episode where he's interviewing me. I remember staring at the ceiling with a blank face after the interview thinking, shit, I just exposed some of my deepest fears and insecurities to thousands of people. How embarrassing, the internet is forever once something is posted. To my surprise, it resonated with a lot of people and to this day I still get PMs saying how refreshing it was. I was actually surprised that he posted the interview because at one point I called him out as a typical guru that hypes up stuff and charges ridiculous amounts of money for it. Anyone who's been around the forum long enough knows that I can't stand gurus because quite often they lead you down the wrong path causing wasted money, energy, and most importantly time. I wasted so many years trying to figure out the truth. Literally years. Mail shake. Don't blast a ton of emails at the same moment or else you run a higher risk of going to the spam folder. Mail shake allows you to stagger them every 20 minutes. I have a LinkedIn strategy that works far better than cold email, but it requires custom software for you to execute on it. It's more effective because you actually add value and build a relationship with them first before asking for anything. In a nutshell, the software scrapes LinkedIn for people based on specific criteria i.e. industry, company size, zip code, job title, etc. Once it finds those users it requests to add them to my network. After they accept the ad, they receive a ton of value that eventually builds up a relationship with them over the course of two weeks. It's a cool little autoresponder series that works 24 hours a day for me. If they don't accept the ad because they're not on LinkedIn that regularly, the scraper then grabs their email address and sends them a few messages directly to their email. The email address is also used to retarget them with ads on FB. Just keep adding value on every platform. It's so much easier to sell stuff to people when they already feel like you have a genuine interest in helping them succeed. The goal here is to touch them on as many platforms as possible so that you're in the back of their mind. Rarely do you make a sale from just one touch. The more you touch the same person, the more likely they are to buy over time. Why do you think Ty Lopez is plastering his face all over multiple social media platforms? Gosh I hope someone actually executes on this knowledge. Nope. Hang out with enough rich people and you'll start to realize that they're actually very open with sharing their info. Broke people are the ones who tend to be selfish with the knowledge, they're quick to protect their idea, 
thinking that the idea is what makes someone a millionaire. 100% not true. The way it works in the real world is that you usually get the product to the market then continuously listen to the market so that you can tweak its features until you have something the masses will love. My favorite example of this is Instagram, they started out as a full-fledged social media platform that wanted to compete with Facebook. After a full year of coding and development, they released it and it was a big flop. Then they decided to remove 90% of the features and keep only the photo feature because the users seemed to like that part. Boom. Success. BTW guys, podcasting is outrageously saturated these days. It's 2017 and I wouldn't even touch the method that I wrote about years ago. Don't worry ICK, I will be. It would be great to hear this interview if you wouldn't mind ping me a link or title. I have listened to the majority of his podcasts, so maybe I already heard it. This technique does sound great, is there any publicly available software that can accomplish this? I'm assuming LinkedIn wouldn't like it very much if there was a public software that did this. What language was your program written in? I have done some scraping in Python before, so maybe this isn't too far out of my reach. That's what I was thinking when I started looking into it in my chosen market. How then? Would you recommend providing value to a niche without having any prior industry knowledge? Interviewing industry experts still seems like the best way to get the knowledge to me, perhaps there is a better way to present that knowledge to others in the industry without using podcasts though? I would love to hear your ideas. I was thinking maybe infographics and videos. For those of you that started, did you create a dummy business email or website or online presence when you were first reaching out? Copywriting? Would love to hear this interview as well. 100%. You can. Gmail also works fine. Take action. Ha. It's taken me half a day to get through this thread. Between running my biz, being a mom, coping breadcrumbs into a Word doc and other duties. All the while I kept an eye on the date and having two main thoughts. One. Of all the folks that said, I mean. Where are they now? Just curiosity and, most importantly too, seven years later, how would tweak the original post? If this post was first put up today, not in 2010 but October 2017, what would those first steps look like? My assumptions are that a few things would still remain, do. Learn from what you do. Tweak. Do more. Learn copy be fearless. The worst thing anyone will say is no. Rich people don't mind sharing knowledge. Poor people do. Do everything with love and a desire to help others. Would contacting the top 100 in your niche still be worthwhile, just change the platform? I'm thinking yes. Video is huge right now. So instead of podcasting perhaps a taped Skype interview posted on your website and possible link through YouTube? Or is all this changed? Is there a more effective way, or perhaps audiences are tired of this? What I know for sure has not changed, the niche challenge. I know I can build anything, but there are so many choices. I am bad at buffets and potlucks too. Lol I need a launching pad. Why is it so tough to just pick one thing and run with it? Uncertainty. Vulnerability. Fear. I'm tempted to think a Facebook group would work best with FB Live. I stumbled upon this post accidentally, my niche needs marketing help so I am going to do that, and then see if I can crack out a SAS idea. Thanks. Edit. The FB group might be a bit much actually. Hi war, that is a really cool idea. Thanks so much. It really resonates W or maybe or see if I know a bit about someone I can always find something fun to talk about. At that point it is a very good bet they will like me not in FB sense. Then, unless they are super famous or paranoid, I can probably set up a phone call or a cup of coffee. Like you said, most people like to talk. 
if you give a little bit of well-deserved praise then you're off to the races. I think you may have hit on something basic. By just getting to know people in your niche you can get the ball rolling, and that requires not a penny. Bless your heart, Greg. This is something I always wanted to do but with a slight difference. I wanted to build an image initially by doing something like blogging and all. Once I have a group of followers and a niche and markets need then find the product and get into the business. Followers will do the marketing. Great article showing that you are really putting in the work. Think of trying it with my blog sometime. Hello all. Thanks to for showing through one of the best way to proceed. I must be a real dumb guy here asking this question, kindly forgive my ignorance. I am a so called entrepreneur, with nothing much achieved in last 8 years. I am mainly into software development services or web design services and mobile apps development. We are a team of 4 people. In last few months I am having hard time to get clients as I have worked on so many domains without concentrating on one due to which I have very limited options now. It's like I have to restart now from beginning. I am really not sure right now as which niche to select and totally concentrate on it. If someone can help me a bit, I will be back on track. Thanks so much for all. Hello all. I have finally decided to choose my niche as Ayurvedic doctors who have their setup. I have done a bit of research on Google Trends and seems Ayurvedic term is being searched quite a lot and it's picking up. I have started to contact Ayurvedic doctors on LinkedIn. I have sent some three requests till now and have also joined the Ayurvedic doctors group on LinkedIn. As I progress with my task, will keep you posted here. Below is the template that I used while contacting the doctors. Hello, we are starting up with a Ayurveda related website. I have gone through your profile. Will you be able to share a few moments and we would love to interview you on Ayurvedic remedies. Please let me know. Thank you and looking forward to connect. Finger crossed. Thanks. I'll do it and I'll come back and let you know which is the result for sure. Nevertheless, I reckon you should correct the worst case scenario baseline which is not measured by money but by time. In any case, the darkest situation would be to develop a new skill or to enhance an older one. Many thanks for your blueprint. Or quote. Hi Vinay, I know nothing about Ayurveda but the remedy area is certainly hopping. Good idea. Before you mail out your template have someone proofread it and polish it up. There are grammatical errors and that is not professional. If you don't have anyone that can help you let me know and I'll tighten it up for you. Greg. Dear sir, can you help me to tighten it up? It will be helpful as I am not able to convert many. Thanks. What part of India are you from? You need to spend a little more time on the forum it seems. There is no benefit to this forum if you treat it like a retail store, you may want to learn effective copy as well to help you with this venture, it seems that you went on several other threads and are asking same question about what niche to pick select. We cannot give you that, the market gives you that, our opinions do not matter, you have to test out for yourself. This is not a good intro, so what's that you are starting an Ayurvedic based website? Why do you want to interview me public users this statement, seems like a benefit to you only but what about the other end? Also, if you went through their profile, maybe reiterate some pointers on why they are a good candidate for possible potential interviewing, things like this need improvement. Bump for the newer folks. And to resurrect ICK from his mega yacht. Hi Van. I've seen your question posed many times in different words on this forum. Nobody can ever tell you what your niche should be. It's not like finding the best row return on equity in the stock market. I've learned the hard way that entrepreneurship requires a degree of passion. Whether it's fishing or ups or bodybuilding, only you know. Joseph Campbell put it this way, follow your bliss. Obviously common sense is important because you can't sell at a loss for very long. Greg. 
ICK, this thread has inspired me to try your approach. I have been spinning my wheels for quite some time though I have learned some great new skills in the process. I have a niche clearly defined, and I'm diving in tonight on LinkedIn. A big thank you for reviving this gold. Update, started the process outlined by ICK last night. Sent out 40 LinkedIn messages. Received 7 replies in the last 24 hours, all of them confirming a willingness to connect over the phone sometime in the next couple of weeks. Two of the 7 respondents are CEOs. The other 5 are a mixed bag of folks at various levels of leadership or experience. Excited to see where it goes, working on my interview content right now. Personally I find this thread to be discouraging. All of these people who decided to use this system and not one of them got past step 2 if they did they did not update us. The question is, why? This thread reminds me a lot of John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire. He started just hustling interviewing a new entrepreneur every single day for years and now he has a huge following and sponsorships for his podcast. Not sure if he sells any information or does any kind of consulting but the idea behind this thread still great and always valid I'd say. If you search many different leaders in various fields you can see immensely successful people who follow this exact model. Oprah and Tim Ferriss are the first that come to mind but I'm sure there are more. Has anyone got any tips or strategies for evaluating niches? I have a long list but I'm struggling to choose. Does a large industry have too much competition or are smaller industries not good because there aren't many people to sell to? Bump we need ice ok. We need ice cream. Bump we need that. I'd actually be interested to see some sort of update from some of the earlier posters as well. Is copywriting skills or be proficient at copy required before doing this? How do I know if I'm already good at copywriting? Thanks for any help out there. Write some best copy and post here as thread. Experts will tell you how good you are and what level you are. I'm about to lay it out on the line. I'm going to tell the whole world exactly where the too much competition is hiding. Is everyone ready? You have 100 ideas. You have spent days or weeks or months or years evaluating and reading. Where is the most competition? In your head. If you don't take action within the next 72 hours. Quit fooling yourself and if you have a partner, quit making their life hard because you are being a dumb at SS. Either do it or shut the hell up about it. Who cares what anyone else is doing? Why do you care? Why? You need to be worried about what you are doing because for everyone that is in the position that this poster is in, you are your own competition and you are losing. So how about everyone updating what you have done 72 hours from the time you read this? Are you serious about a business or more interested in action faking? It's your story? You write it? Okay, I'll keep that in mind, thanks. If you're scared to call, go have lunch with the business owners instead. Someone with English as their second language is doing just that. Awesome what a beautiful plan. While still using a chariot if Henry Ford asks customers about the car that he needing an answer is that they need a horse cart or wagon that runs faster Ford cars will not happen. Ford, he determines the needs of customers. Thank you very much. I have been reading comments here recently that say I have not made any money at all, I have not made money for 5 years. I am suicidal. I am a little discombobulated. Wow using that word was fun. Which route to go? One thing you advise and one thing you did like not sure of which niche to pick, aiming to be India specific to put order into the chaos of a particular industry by solving a real problem. You're going to have to pick one, mate. 